Now what? Are we thinking that it would be natural then for him to be very vague about how we can enter into that relationship? Hello, welcome to the Simple Not Shallow podcast. My name is Charles, and this here is the Coffee Side Chat Series. Well, so named because of this beautiful cup of coffee sitting on the counter right beside me. And we are coming to you from the very hallowed halls of my kitchen university. Ah, there's no better place, really, than the kitchen counter to stand around, talk, laugh, and learn together while we kick around an idea or two as we sip on this very beautiful cup of coffee. Cheers. Oh, my. Mm. I do hope you have a cup of coffee sitting beside you. Chats just go much better with coffee. And, as always, while we're kicking this idea around, we are going to be looking at it through the lens of what it means to be a Christian, which is a following of Jesus that first and foremost involves a relationship that leads to studentship, that leads to a life lived based on everything learned. If there is no living, there has been no learning. If there has been no learning, there has been no relationship. They really are that intrinsically linked. And, as always, I am going to list all the scripture we reference in the description area so you can check it out. That way you can make sure I'm not too far out in left field. Okay, so, recently, I've been hearing questions such as, Well, how is it truly loving for Jesus to say that no one can come to the Father but by Him? I mean, isn't that just a little bit exclusive? Shouldn't love be much more inclusive. I mean, you know, if God is so loving, why would he put a limit on how people can connect with him? In response to these type of questions, I've had a question of my own arise. See, if Jesus is who he says he is, then how would it be loving if he did not say this? No, 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 seriously, so seriously, how would that be loving? Well, I'll tell you what, let's take a look at some of the things Jesus says about himself, and we'll go from there. Now, we are only going to look at a few things, as time is pretty short here. Feel free to look for more. I'm sure you'll find plenty other examples where Jesus is talking about himself. So, the few things we I want to discover, discuss with you, and in no particular order, uh, first, he says that he and the Father are one. You know, not that they're the same person, but that they are unified in heart, mind, and purpose, right? He next says that he is in the Father, and the Father is in him. They abide with each other. Next, he says that he only says and does the th things as the Father gives him things to say and do. Not next, he says he identifies himself as the Son of God, which people of his day understood for him to be calling himself God. They thought it was blasphemous. They wanted to kill him over it. So he said he was God. And he says that even as the Father has life in himself, so too he gave Jesus life in himself. And, you know, with all of this being so, Jesus then states, if you know me, you know the Father. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. See, Jesus reveals who the Father is. And because of this, he can also say that if you reject me, you have rejected the one who sent me, meaning God the Father. And then, you know, remember he says that he came to give an abundance of life and that he came to give eternal life, 
which he clarifies what he means by saying that eternal life is to know the only true God and to know Jesus himself. So, what we've seen Jesus say so far is that he has come to give us a relationship with the Father. Now, with this as the basis, the bedrock, the starting point, let's kick around the idea that if Jesus is who he says he is, then this is actually a very loving thing for him to say that he is the way, the only way. Okay, so, you know, based on what we've talked about so far, we have seen that Jesus is God the Son. Wow, where did my voice go? Jesus is God the Son who came to make a relationship with God the Father possible. Now, let that sink in for just a moment. All right, so, next, how do we get from that statement to it being a loving thing for him to share how to enter into that relationship. Well, let's consider this a little simply. He wants a relationship, right, with us. And he has greatly sacrificed of himself to make that a possibility. And now what? Are we thinking that it would be natural then for him to be very vague about how we can enter into that relationship? I mean, he's going to give up his status. He's going to enter into a lowly created human form. He's going to suffer excruciating pain and die alone. Doing all that only to stop very short and say, okay, Figure it out now, on your own. And I do hope you make the correct guess. Otherwise, well, it's going to be too bad for you. Mm. And by the way, I want to make very clear that I suffered everything I did just so you could be clueless. Mm. Yes, I did. That makes no kind of sense. You know, and, and nor would it be very loving to leave us stranded like that. Indeed, that would actually be kind of sick, wouldn't it? Well, see, as our loving God does require a choice on our part and since God has been loving enough to make that choice a possibility, wouldn't it then be loving to tell us exactly what choice we needed to make if we are to choose the very thing that he wants us to choose, and that he has even taken great pains to make possible? Now that, makes a lot of sense. And Jesus is telling us exactly that when he says that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one can come to the Father but through him. See, this is a very loving thing to say. So too, by the way, it is loving when Jesus says that if you reject him, you are also rejecting the Father. I mean, if you miss out on Jesus, you miss out on it all. Right? I mean, you miss out on God. And as a result, you also miss out on the abundance of life that he is offering. Well, don't you want to tell those you love how not to miss out on the very best things in life that you have found? You do, don't you? Would a loving God really do less? I don't think so. And another benefit of this is that I find it helps 
make sense of something else Jesus said, you know, when he compares himself to being the small gate by which we enter into the way of life. And when he talks about how that way, the way of life, the pathway of eternal life, of knowing and relating to God, is actually a narrow way. Well, since we have to accept Jesus to accept the Father, a relationship with him, with Jesus, is the small gateway we must use in order to enter the way of relating to the Father. I mean, think of it this way. To be in a relationship with someone, any kind of relationship, that involves getting to know that particular person as that individual reveals him or herself to be, right? And also, you can't get to know somebody by choosing to relate to anyone and everyone else rather than the one person you claim you want to relate to. Also true. Hmm. And, you know, so too with God. We must get to know God as he reveals himself to us. And Jesus has shown himself to be how the Father reveals himself. I mean, Jesus says it. He says, if you know me, you know the Father. Well, he also says, but the one and only Son, you know, referring to Jesus himself, has made him known. And so, if we reject Jesus, then we have rejected entry entry into a relationship with God himself. Well, moving on to how a relationship with God can be narrow, the narrow way, rather. Well, when you think about it, relationships are always rather limiting in nature, are they not? I mean, even as they are very richly rewarding. I mean, in any relationship you have, there are certain things you must do in order to keep that relationship alive and growing, what the other person responds to, respects, and likes. And there are those things that you must not do if you want that relationship to continue and grow, or even begin with. That's just the condition and nature of relationships in general. And you know, I'm afraid I'm going to have to put my Captain Obvious hat on here for just a moment, so bear with me. But since Jesus is also God, we could even say that we have to get to know God in order to know God. You're welcome for that one. And there you go. Because Jesus is God, and he reveals who God is. He is the way. And so, it is a very loving thing for him to say. Well, we're getting a little long, and My coffee is starting to run just a little short. But I do hope you have found this chat to be a little informative anyway, and I hope useful in your growth in Jesus. For that's the reason for my doing any of this truly. Now, as always, yes, there is much more that could be said on this. But, you know, my coffee cup is only so big and, well, it's almost empty. So we probably need to wrap this up. But with this in mind, please let me know what you think about all this. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? And please, do me the honor of giving me the reasons that you do or don't agree. For, you know, it does me no wrong to simply it does me no wrong. It does me no good to simply say, you're wrong. You know, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I've been wrong about things. And I want to get right. If you think I'm wrong, share with me why, and we'll discuss it. We'll kick it around. You know, that's the way friendships begin. 
That's the way we can both grow in our faith. That's an exciting thing. And thank you in advance for doing so. Well, until next time then, may you continue to grow in your relationship with the one true God and with Jesus himself. And may you take it easy and take it slow and make coffee into your cup always flow. Just like my poetry. Yeah.